Next Lover. Danny Sir was the first firefighter killed on 9-11 because our engine company was with Danny Sir's company and they were making their way into one of the towers and somebody that jumped out of the building landed on Danny Sir and wow. it pretty much killed him instantly. So now all, the, all those two companies, those 10 guys all stopped. They picked him up. They put him in an ambulance. And in that time frame, by time getting him to an ambulance is when that towel came down. So as horrible as it was that, that Danny passed away, 10 other lives were saved because all those guys would have been in the building. And they would have died. You know, Danny would have died in the building anyway. So that's how we knew that our, our engine company was safe. So we knew that we were missing six guys. And um, so... All I can tell you, I just remember being on the pile. And he's the first firefighter considered killed. Yes. That's crazy. And it wasn't even from the building. No. From another so somebody, human being. Somebody. Unfortunate. Somebody soul. landing on him. Yeah, horrible. But. um. Yeah, brother, I know. Trust me. So. <clears throat> so now I just go to the pile and um, we're on the pile doing whatever it is we can do. I mean, there's fires everywhere. There's not too many areas you can go because a lot of fire, there's a lot of heat. And we're just looking for people. And, you know, and, and if you knew the World Trade Center, there's like a city underneath it between the subways and the restaurants. The E-trains under there. And, you know, there's like six levels of stores and subways underneath it. Sub-levels. So we're hoping, hey, maybe whoever didn't get out, maybe they're, you know, they have, they're safely below. Or, you know, we're thinking whatever. And if, and if you look, I mean, I even have some pictures, and I mean, you've seen them over the years. Part of the Marriott Hotel, which connected the two towers, I think the first two floors of the Marriott were still standing. And uh, But the World Trade Center, even though some of the columns were still standing, it was like one big pancake collapse. Like, you know, no one survived that if anyone was in there. But we were saying, oh, look at the Marriott. Maybe there's somebody in there. Maybe there's somebody in below ground. So those first couple of days, you know, we had hope, you know, it was, we were, we were searching for, for people, you know, we weren't just looking for bodies. We had hope. But after, after the first couple of days of not finding anyone, you know, kind of knew that this isn't going to end well for no one we found. I mean, but originally there was a list going around with 500 firefighter names on it of guys who they thought died because there was just so much mass confusion. Yeah. Um, it was really we didn't know chaotic. who was who and, and who was who. And honestly, Two other guys from my firehouse, we didn't even know they were, they died until it was either that night or the next day. Because in addition to the six guys who were on ladder 118, um, Captain Marty Egan, he was our lieutenant. He had just got promoted to captain maybe a couple of weeks before 9-11. And he was assigned to headquarters, which is also in downtown Brooklyn. So he was working at headquarters that day. He jumped in the car with other firemen from headquarters he went down there and he got killed. Our lieutenant, Bobby Wallace, he was on vacation. And his vacation ended that morning. And he was working overtime in another firehouse. And we didn't even know because he wasn't in our firehouse. He was in another firehouse. And he got, he got killed along with, I think, four or five guys on the fire truck he was on. So those were two more guys that we didn't even know about. Till the you next guys day. Lost a total of how many guys are you? Eight from my firehouse, and me personally, probably maybe like 60, 70 guys that I knew. And, you know, several guys who used to work on our firehouse. Oreo Palmer, he was our lieutenant. He was a, and he was a chief during 9 11. He ended up, he ended, he got higher than anybody else. He got up to the, I think somewhere in the 70s, uh, you know, and you will hear, you can hear his radio transmissions very hard to listen to because he's given May days. He's telling you that 1045, that means there's victims it's about fires, about airplane parts. And he's saying, you know, you got to get a hose line up here. We need this. We need that. He's trying and to do his job, man. He, he, he took the elevator, I think up to like the 30, 40th floor. And then he ran the last 35 floors. So he got up to the 70 something floor and then his radio transmissions finally cut out because the building collapsed. <laughs> 